Hello and welcome to this video for Electric Pages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell, and today we're here in Nuremberg from Embedded World 2025, and we are at the Giga Device stand. If you're an engineer like me who does a lot of stuff with microcontrollers, Giga Device, we all know for the GD32 series, but they do a lot more than just microcontrollers. And today I'm joined by a very good friend from Giga Device. Please tell, tell the audience who you are, what yes, you do. My, and my what name you do. is uh, Conrado Caño, and I'm a director of marketing for Flash at Giga Device. Yeah, fantastic. So, can you just tell us what's going on today and what you're showing us here? So here we have our setup on our Giga Device products that are automotive ready. Right. So we have our LQ and Q series uh, for two megabit to sixty-four megabit densities. We have our F and the LQ. LF series from 64 megabit to mm -hmm. 2 gigabit, mm -hmm. as well as the LT and T series from uh, 64 megabit up to 2 gigabit mm -hmm. devices. Those are quad devices, by the way. Yeah. And on here, it's up to 133 megahertz from by one, by two, and by four. And that's a quad interface. And on yeah. this uh, product family, we can go up to 166 megahertz SDR. Yeah. 104 megahertz for a DTR, and on the higher speed that we can support, at 200 megahertz mm -hmm. and 200 megahertz DTR. So that's the fastest quad interface. Mm -hmm. And on the middle part here are our octal mm -hmm. interface parts from 64 megabit up to 2 gigabit, mm -hmm. and it's a by eight. So up to 200 megahertz of uh, DTR of up to 400 megabytes per second. So these are all ACL. D ready devices and ACQ qualified. So I suppose my first question is that you have both NOR and NAND flash memories. In an automotive environment, when would you use the, the uh, NOR or NAND? When, when would you choose different ones? So NOR is more on the high reliability side. Right. And a little bit lower density, right? From, as you can see here, two megabit up to two gigabit. Yeah. Uh, the single die is a 512 megabit, and the one gigabit and two gigabit, you stack mm -hmm. those uh, 512 megabits. So, so you've got two different colors here. Uh, which, which one's which? So this is a, just a different series. So this I is see. a three-bolt part, and then oh, that's so, a 1.8 Oh, okay, so the, the darker blue is your yes. 1.8 volts. Oh, it, and perfect. here's our SPI NAND side. Yes. And look at the density. It's from one gigabit to four gigabit. So it's a oh, higher density. It's a lot side. higher. And that's because of the way that the NAND uh, memory cells are structured, so it's easier yes. to stack them. So and it's sequential, so, so bigger page size, so bigger block size. So I think I think they're slower than NOR, but they're much more dense. I think is that correct? Yes. Or, well, yeah, the, in terms of uh, oh, frequency, two hundred. Two hundred. Oh, so, and uh, this is oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Bigger. So yeah. It, they're in par. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the main difference is just so like you say reliability re in terms of and, and, and so you might reliability. And so you might use more for something like system configuration or something yes. quite critical. For data and, co uh, and code, most yeah. likely bigger, larger yeah. size than it's NAND. Fantastic. So we've so looked at some of the NOR uh, no and NANA flash memories. Could you tell us what's going on here? Yeah, so we have here our demo. Um, so this is a module made by TQ Technology. Mm -hmm. And it's oh, it's a little projector. And it's basically the projection mm. for cars. And uh, it's using a TI chipset. So right. we partner with our SOC partners to basically qualify our parts and so that it can be used on by our mutual customers. So on these two demos, it's and, and, basically the same. And in this demo, what, of, uh, and in, in this demo, what are we trying to demonstrate about the, the, the memory solutions? So basically what they're using is a octal interface, mm -hmm. so the product that I mentioned there with the 200 megabytes, or 400 megabytes per second, I'm sorry, throughput, so it's very fast. 400 megabytes a second? Yes. That's uh, a that, fast, fly me. That's very so fast. For applications that needs instant on, mm. those are the perfect solutions. And so that's why you're using the projector as an example, because the mem I'm guessing the memory read speeds must be very, yeah, so very high. On car applications, where they use this is basically they project, you see those uh, projections on the ground? That's what, what they were they using. Sorry, projections on the ground? Yes. Uh, they call it, uh, this one is on the side mirror application, right? So as you can see here, 
the name, the, the, the logo of the car. Yeah. Sometimes they put it on the. Oh, I, I've seen I've seen those in some vehicles. Like I think I think I think the Mini might have that. Where if you open the door, the uh, the actual Mini logo and that it's actually so projected the to the ground. And yeah. models just only put yeah. this, this type of application. Absolutely fantastic. And on, on top shelves there. Oh, got some ears as well. Yeah. Got so well. the radar applications. So front radars, but and this is also from TI. Hmm. And ah. this is using our 64 megabit three volt uh, hmm. devices. And again, in this application here, what would be the purpose of uh, the Giga device memory chips? So it's a mem memory storage for their SOCs. Right. So it's code and data storage. Mm. And again, radar is just scanning, LiDAR type yeah. scanning on the, the... But the, And the most important thing is that what we're really trying to show here is that it's automotive grade. Yes, all of these are automotive grade. Fantastic. So we've seen a lot of automotive applications here, but what other areas of industry would these chips be good for? They are used in the majority of uh, applications that you see out there, uh, from the four Cs, mm. computing, from consumer, mm. communication, and then the car applications, as I mentioned. Mm. And the terms of shipments up to four billion units a year. Right? Four so, billion? So if you, for just our shipment, right? Four billion? Yes. And from that perspective, you can just imagine how many electronic components has this memory. Four billion? That's absurd. So in terms of like, I know this is more of a sales question, but how do you see those numbers growing in the future? It's just as new emerging applications are hmm. coming up, obviously they need more memory. Yeah. Majority of it is every two years or so, there's like a double of mm. uh, code requirement, data requirement, so it's just mm. doubling the density and so and, forth. And, and one area of application that I'm thinking of uh, is things like is things like on-chip on inference of AI. So do you see these being quite useful for an application like that, especially with the high write speeds and the read speeds? Yes, for sure. Uh, you, you see here it's a by eight mm. and a, uh, 400 megabytes per second. Obviously, in the future, possibly higher speed and Obviously, with the lower process nodes that are coming up for this advanced uh, process node on processors, lower voltage is also being uh, required. So we are also having the 1.2 volt, uh, pure 1.2 volt products. 1.2 volts? Well, also 1.2 volt I.O. That's, that's really low. You're getting very close to the uh, era of sort of like uh, noise. Yes, great. but uh, and it, this is driven by the advanced process nodes. Mm. So, like, currently three nanometer processes in production. But mm. Sooner or later, two, one are coming up, right? So, oh, that's it's, absolutely it's difficult for these process nodes to support higher voltage on the IO. Mm. Well, it's, it's getting so small, you can't too much voltage. You're going to break the, yes. you're gonna, all the breakdowns. Is going to just, high leakage. Yeah, higher. Uh, area to design and all that. Mm. And it basically costs higher mm. to, to support higher voltage. That's absolutely fantastic. So I've got one more final question for you. For the audience who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with Giga Device Memory Solutions, what would you recommend that they do? Just, uh, we have our website. Yep. Uh, and then they can have uh, a visit of our product lines and all that. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we have sales reps uh, around that they can also contact. So, fantastic. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us today. Thank you. Thank you very much.